Mid Journey version 6.1 was released. And I wanted to explore just how far it's come in terms of web design. There is a bunch of improvements to quality, speed, text, and image coherence. And I'm interested to see if this is all hype or if there's a significant update to help me redesign better websites. So here's the question. Is this version of Mid Journey better than the last? In this video, I'm going to cover it in three parts. First, I want to quickly summarize everything that's changed or improved so we can have a look at things like the new alpha version of the website that was released. Second, I want to explore these in depth, see exactly how they've changed with examples and prompts that you can use. And third, I want to see how Mid Journey has come in terms of utilizing it for web design. What kind of improvements are there to things like creating logos, text and illustrations? Let's find out. Firstly, in case you didn't know, there's also a huge website update, meaning you no longer need to jump on Discord to use Midjourney, and you can actually generate all your prompts through the website itself. Though so I'll get into this a little bit later on. I've spent a bit of time with the new version of Midjourney and read up the changelog. Here's what's changed. There are improvements for the following. Coherence, quality, precision, upscaling, speed, and personalization. Let's take a look at the first one. Coherence. This has to do with how the AI visualizes things like arms, legs, plants, and animals. If you've ever seen a person with seven fingers instead of five, this has to do with coherence. While it might not seem like a huge leap, having an AI generate a regular human with five fingers is a significant leap forward. In practical terms, this just means a better anatomy for humans and animals. Regular sized arms, legs, bodies that look more realistic and don't suffer from disproportional sizing. The next improvement is to quality. Since this is a broad term, let me be a bit more specific. Previous versions of Midjourney had odd pixelation and artifacting. This is when strange shapes or little items appear in an image that shouldn't otherwise be there. The newer version has a less of that. It also has smoother gradients and sharper images. These sharper images are cleaner and have higher visual fidelity, meaning they just look better. That's also not all. There's also improved texture quality and a lot of the textures and now are a lot more detailed, especially when using the upscaler and enhancing the texture or detail quality. In practical terms, this means that things that you generate as textures, things like skin for example, will just look a lot more realistic. The third improvement to Mid Journey comes in precision. Things that used to be small or detailed, things like eyes or small faces or objects that are far away are just done a lot better now. This includes text. The text accuracy looks a lot better, especially when drawing words via quotations in prompts. So finally, maybe I'll be able to create some logos where the characters don't look like they were designed by aliens. The fourth improvement is to upscaling. There is a new two times upscaler which has a much better image quality and texture quality. Where an original image is 1024 by 1024 pixels, this one is 2048 by 2048. And as you can tell by this rooster, it looks significantly better. The fifth change is to speed. It's about 25% faster for most standard image jobs. And this can be even faster if you reduce the quality setting in 6.1. However, if you want good quality textures, this is probably something you want to keep on high. And finally, personalization. Midjourney allows you to create personalized images based on your own preferences. This is done through a ranking system where first you go through a number of images and select which ones you prefer and which ones you don't. After this, you can use the dash dash p code in order to have personalized entries. So let me start actually using Midjourney 6.1 and seeing how it goes in terms of web design. What I found is that it's still not that great at creating web designs from scratch. Instead, it places them inside of products. Products like this inside of an iPad or an iPhone or even a computer screen. It isn't as useful if I'm trying to to get inspiration for web design, but at least it's something. Let me show you an example. I put in a web design for a coffee store with a landing page, and instead of getting a web design with a landing page, I just got these images of coffee cups inside of a store. Now these would look amazing as an image on a landing page, but it isn't actually a design or a web design. I did test out lots of different types of prompts. One that kind of worked was this one for a clean minimalist wireframe for a website landing page. And while it looks usable, even if I upscale it, there's really just not enough for me to utilize a design like this. And it's better
better off me just creating my own. So if you are intending to use a mid journey for web design, this is what I recommend. Create prompts about businesses that you're designing for sections of the website, sections like feature sections or hero sections, where you can use the images itself as a background to place behind text and elements. Let me show you what I mean. I can log on to Wix Studio here and grab one of the templates and simply edit it. I'll look for one that looks kind of like a coffee store and upload the images I generated on Midjourney and simply place them as hero sections or feature sections. Then I can just update the text and suddenly Finally, I've got a website here for a coffee store that kind of fits in terms of the theme, aesthetic and colors. The same can be done for icons or illustrations, like these ones here that look like they're drawn with a pencil or a pen. I can simply create a prompt that describes something similar, but instead for a coffee store, and then use these images inside of the web design. There's different ways to remove the background and change the color, but let's have a look at another really cool feature. This is being able to use an editor directly inside of the website. This editor actually lets me cut out or change different objects that are already in a scene and modify them with prompts. So here I've got a coffee cup. And for example, since this is a coffee store, maybe they're only selling coffee beans. So I can change up the prompt here, saying that instead of a cup of coffee, this is just a coffee store with rich beans in the background. I can also change the brush size, the aspect ratio, but I'm happy with that. Here's the new generation with just coffee beans, and it gives you an idea of how you can quickly modify scenes.